Hi everyone, this is Adrian with Adrian Klein Photography, also a team member of Photo Cascadia. As you can probably tell by looking at your screen here, I want to do a little video on abstract nature photography. It's a type of photography I really enjoy where you can find unique or different images going to a location that might have been visited thousands of th times from folks before you. It's definitely not easy to cancel out the noise and distractions from larger scenes, yet I find when I'm successful doing that, it's a really rewarding feeling with that different type of image I'm able to come home with. I put a quote up here on the screen which says, In every landscape should reside jewels of abstract art waiting to be discovered. I really like this quote. I feel like it tells what we're trying to do when we're out there hunting for these abstract photos out in nature. Really what we're looking for is those jewels and they're just waiting to be found. For this short little video here, what I want to do is cover probably only about three or four images from my portfolio. And what I'll do for each of those is I'm going to cover two or three images for that scene leading up to the final one to get a better of idea how I ended up with that one, why it made the cut versus the other ones that maybe didn't make the cut. As photographers, we often only show that final image that made the cut, which makes sense for our portfolio, right? But for the sake of learning, seeing the so-called bad photos helps us understand the process and what makes for the most compelling images. With that, let's go ahead and dive into some photos here. This first image is from the subway in Zion National Park. If you've never been hiking up there, I highly recommend it. Very beautiful. Obviously, lots of great scenic landscapes to be had in that hike. Yet what really caught my eye was this particular boulder or rock off to the side of the trail that had these interesting textures, shapes, and colors as you see here in front of you. I took out my telephoto lens and I basically honed in on some small little subsets of the rock that, you know, it was kind of some areas were all red, some were all tan, and then there was this some spaces like this that were just mixture of the the tan and the red and I was looking for something that would be really intriguing to the eye some lines or shapes or patterns this first image that I took here was interesting but again it didn't really show that type of patterns that I was looking for in this particular abstract so I moved on and from there I took this horizontal take which basically has the less red more tan and you can see it's got there's you could infer some patterns some lines kind of like this but it really is not doing it for me it's not really what I'm looking for it's not as strong as I want so with that I left this image and I ended up moving and to this one and this is the final image I captured and you can see quite a difference I'm gonna jump back through these so you can see so we started off with this one moved to here and then ended up here and it's much different image than the others. If you're not noticing the difference here, I'm going to do a little drawing so you can get a better understanding. So you got down the center here, this line really helps to separate the two sides here. And then on the two sides, you got these splotches or patches, however you want to call them, and they kind of come down the side in somewhat even fashion. So it balances out. After I took this image, I realized, oh, it's kind of like scales on a lizard, and I'm out in a desert, so I ended up calling this image Desert Lizard. This image here in front of you is in the Columbia River Gorge. I'm standing up on a cliff top, tail end of fall, early days of winter, nice moody sunset going on. As you can see, a pretty dramatic landscape photo, and a beautiful evening for sure all day long and it's sun breaks coming in and out, rain showers, all that good stuff for photography. That said, when I was standing here, I could look down at the trees in the foreground and I thought there's got to be something down there that's more intimate, abstract, that's really cool, that separates from the whole rest of the scene here. And trying to cancel that noise of everything else that's in front of you is really tough, yet I ended up putting the wide angle away after this shot and breaking out the telephoto lens. After putting on my telephoto lens, one of the first images I took is the one here in front of you. 
always drawn me into the scene, just the whole trees down below in general, is the soft painterly colors going on here after the trees had lost all their leaves and just showing the branches and the grasses below and the tree trunks. For this one though, what I didn't really like about it is the fact, and I'm going to draw here so you get a better idea, is this open area at the bottom. If we would have had three bushes here in the front, it might have balanced out a little better and I might have spent a little more time, you know, cropping or editing this as just a quick edit. Yet, that kind of did it for me, so I moved on. And after I left this scene, I took this one. So basically, a little less trees, brought in some more grasses, got the stream running through it. Got some, you could say, some interesting layers there. But overall, it still wasn't doing for me. It really was not what I was ultimately after. So I left this scene, moved my camera, moved my lens to this was the one I ultimately captured. And this was the aha moment, I guess you could say. All right, so taking a look at this, why does this one stand out more than the other ones? It's obviously a little bit different than the, the two preceding ones. And let me just bounce through those other ones so you can take a look here. So we got this. We moved to this, and then we moved to what we have here. Uh, the first thing that really jumps out at me is the full frame. So there's no open area. It's the fully from corner to corner. It's got the trees, the branches, everything covering it. It's not this open area that's detracting or maybe enhancing the image. It's just full, and I, I like that. Uh, I also love the fact that we got this small group of trees left with a bunch of yellow leaves that contrasts very well with the soft colors of all the other trees that don't really have any leaves left. So that contrast is definitely a, a strong aspect for this photo. And I also like the placement of where the tree is. It's not in the center, it's kind of off to the right corner top, so it's a little bit more towards the power point. And the other last thing I like about it too is just these, the trunks, all of them that you can see in here, they got some nice dark trunks rolling through all and that just adds just a nice balance if you look at all of those in the image as well so it balances out with the lights with all the branches and the grasses going on now what I want to show you is where this final image I ended up with this abstract image is showing in that first landscape photo I showed you so let's move over to that one keep this one in your mind and while you're looking this over I'm gonna pull up my drawing tool and it is right down here at the bottom that yellow tree that was in the abstract image is the one there in this uh, landscape photo so hopefully this provides you a little bit different view or vantage point than you maybe had so you can see the big wide open picture and how we ended up bringing it down to something much smaller just a portion of that image for a final scene For this third and final image I'm going to show you today, this is also in the Columbia River Gorge. I was out wandering around in a forest there, as many of many forests uh, wander around in that area. This was an early winter day, temperature had risen above freezing, and the snow that was on the trees above me was melting, so it was basically like it was pouring on my head. I got pretty soaking wet for this image, yet in the end, I feel it was worth it for what I was able to capture. I do want to say ignore the fact that it's a little soft for this image and the next one before I get to the final one that ended up in my portfolio. These are really, you know, in the dumpster, you could say, next to my final image. And I normally would have deleted them, yet in hindsight I'm glad I kept them just for, for this purpose. What I don't necessarily love about this image is it, although I like the trunks, I like just the, the vertical trunks going on and the similarities there, it feels a little cluttered and messy with some of the branches that are poking through in various areas. So I'll draw here to give you a better idea of what I'm talking about. So we got this one down here at the bottom. Got these kind of stubs here on this trunk. Open here as well with a lot of those broken branches. Broken branches up here. Got this popping through here. It's not really what I'm looking for. It's a little more cluttered in a non-intentional way, a little more haphazard way, I guess you could say. After taking this horizontal vantage point, I moved to a vertical. Now I feel this is a stronger image, 
than the horizontal, yet it suffers from some of the same issues as the, the horizontal one. And it's this top area here where it's just a little messy with the branches that are broken off. It just doesn't look as clean and simple as it can be. What I do like about the image, though, is the framing. We've got the nice trunks on the sides. They go to the thinner trunks throughout the center that are nice and interwoven and balance very well as far as I'm concerned. What I knew about the scene was, is I'd been here long enough I could see the fog rolling in and out and in and out, but if I waited long enough that I felt like a little more fog coming in would have take away the branches that I in the background that I didn't really want to see as much of, but still see a lot of the trunks to give me that abstract feel. After a short period of time, I ended up with an image that I was happy with, this one here. And you can see the difference. If I look at the prior one to this one, and really what it came down to is the fog coming in, and it makes for quite a different image than, than the, the previous one, and one that I was really happy with in the end. I realize this is just a portion of what I could cover around the topic of abstract nature photography. I could go through m more thought processes, more photo examples, yet I hope what I did cover today is something that gets you thinking about it and helps you in your photography process as well. And think about it next time you're out in the field. Create those abstract photos and have fun with it.